Welcome to Grid Talk. Today we're here to preview the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix. My name is Ruby Price and joining me we have Grid Talk co-host Owen Medford. Hello. And Tom Downey. Hello. But before we get into this episode, we must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device today to sign up and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online where the game starts. And as the UK is in a heat wave, we are heading for the heated conditions of Singapore, often described as one of the most challenging races on the calendar. We very usually hit the time limit that um, a race can take, but with layout changes to the third sector, there could be even more sparks than we've previously seen under the um, streetlights of Singapore. So we're going to start off at the back of the grid, a team on three points. They've had more drivers than they've scored uh, points this season. Owain, Alpha Tauri, um, is there what's going? What's going on with Alpha Tauri? Is there anything they can do this weekend to rectify their position? Well, they have comfortably the worst car on the grid. Um, unfortunately, and unfortunately, this isn't a great race for them. I mean, think. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Last year, we had uh, Yuki Tsunoda going out. Um, so as far as I'm concerned for him, he needs to keep it out of the wall. Um, as does Liam Lawson. Obviously, Liam, he's, he wouldn't have driven around here at all. So there's no, um, you know, sort of there's kind of a boatload of pressure, but also way less pressure because, you know, this is a hard race. And he's only been in a Formula One seat for, you know, two you know, one and a bit weekends and two full races. Uh, and this is, as you say, the, the most, the physically challenging uh race um on the grid you know it's it's hot it's humid it's at night it's um it's in conditions that typically they they wouldn't have really seen before um you know as an f2 driver he, he would have sort of raced in dusk at times maybe over in uh over in Jeddah. but um yeah this is going to be a difficult race um and i think the the, the best he can do uh is as you know same as sonoda really keep it out the wall um and try and sort of uh, not hope for other people to mess up um but you know take advantage of the fact that, that there's a little bit less pressure on you um you know Liam's a great driver so he's he's not he, he, you know he'll, he'll make his way around as he's already proved but you know there's there, there's there's the pressure's a bit lifted um and so he could sort of give that get that uh, bigger opportunity to to sort of take everyone by surprise and get a real result out of this yeah absolutely there is certainly something to be said of course about the not lack of pressure because there obviously is some pressure because if he performs then you know there's a seat presumably at the end of it um but at the same time there was no logical scenario that we saw with Liam Lawson being you know in the Alpha Tower seat at this point of the season so basically just take it in his stride survive the race you know anything above the last place even of the um you know, entire grid versus just finishes, like, is a bonus. And, you know, track time is obviously, you know, like the most valuable thing for a rookie, Um, you know, considering the lack of testing and all of that. So, yeah, like, Liam Lawson, if he just keeps it out of the wall, maybe maybe takes a place somewhere, you know, good weekend from him from that perspective. Um, But, Tom, the other alphas um, jumped up by one point thanks to Valtteri Bottas in Monza. Um, I'm not expecting the best of weekends from Alfa Romeo. What are you expecting in Singapore? Not much better, to be honest, mate. Um, the Alfa Romeo, or just Alfa Romeo, it's like... I, I genuinely don't know what to say. I mean, just insert clip of waiting for Audi money here, but we you know that's already trickling in. So maybe they'll come out with, with another bang-tastic livery. Um you know, just to give us something to talk about. But, you know, we've, we've seen that on, on a circuit which has challenges, you know, such as Singapore, you know, because Singapore is you know, certainly a more sort of like downforce heavy circuit. In the past, anyway, we'll get on to that later on. Um, you know, the, the one time where Alfa Romeo showed just just something this season, you're hungry, when both cars got into Q3, even then they blew it. So, so I, I don't know. They might sneak a car into Q2. You know, it's really hard to say. Um, 
if if they if they're going to get something, it's not going to be on pace or you know pure pace. It's it's going to be they're going to benefit from someone else's mistake, whether it's a tangle or a start or whatever. So that realistically, that's the only way I can see them getting something this weekend or next weekend. Yeah, it is certainly something um, interesting to be said that one of their best qualifying performances of the season was at a very high downforce circuit. Now, if um, Singapore, of course, hadn't had um, its later um, of the circuit uh, layout changes, there might be something in it for them, um, theoretically based on that at the very least. But yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see as we have done pretty much all season with Alfa Romeo. Are they going to turn up? Um, you know, the stake sometimes shows up, but you know, Alfa Romeo sometimes we're not sure about. Owain, oh, um, Haas being next up, then just one point ahead of the Alfa Romeos. Um, you know, the tail of their season is good Saturdays, poor Sundays, but with um Singapore, of course, being very deg heavy generally, this is going to be a tough weekend for them, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's not going to be any issues with tire warm up, and uh, and as you say, you know, we've seen a lot of a lot of uh, a, sort of a lot of races of this coming down to at least in certain stints um, being conserving your tire because you know, as you say, it's a it, you know, it's it's high deg, it's on it's on a, a streets. It's only recently been resurfaced, resurfaced, sorry, last year, um, and some of the low speed stuff uh, has been taken out, um, but there's still an awful lot of 90 degree corners um not you know without the downforce to help you and that takes a lot of the tires i i can you know i can see Haas having uh an even bigger problem than they do usually that they're, they're helped by the fact that they've got an experienced driver lineup but uh, i don't think either have gone particularly well in singapore um and it, and it's just one of those that it, I, I don't foresee them doing a lot um i think they're they're more vulnerable um, to Alfa Romeo than they are uh, likely to take on Williams with their recent uptick in form, and uh, and Haas is I I just kind of think they're, they they seem to be freewheeling a little bit, um, and they and the, the car it's not it's it seems to be everything's going wrong for them a little bit, um, and I I I kind of think it's going to be a, it's going to be a tricky weekend. Um, that said, you know if they they could luck out some points, but I don't uh, from from a from a safety car or something like that, but. But even then, I think it's going to be difficult because I think their tire wear problem is just going to be too, um, too dire to get around. Yeah, absolutely. Like when you have an issue with tire deg, as we saw with the Mercedes, um, you know, at the start of the last decade, you know, that rules your entire race ultimately, and it's very hard to make changes to that without ultimately changing your car. Obviously, during the cost cap era, making fundamental changes to like your car concept then sets you back even more because that's spending that you can't put anywhere else um but ultimately if your tires aren't going the, the distance you're gonna struggle regardless um but a team that you know have had one driver struggling but you know as a rookie one driver excelling not quite sure how things are going to work out this weekend at the much higher downforce of singapore but Williams, Tom, currently P4, very much in a bit of no man's land, really, um, being 10 points ahead of uh, the Haas, but, you know, 52 points behind the Alpine. And I'm not sure even Alex Albon can, you know, he's putting some stellar drives, but I'm not sure he can make up that gap himself. Yeah, Williams have been a bit of a weird one this year, and I say that in a good way. They've just, they started off, you know, not great, and then circuits where we thought perhaps you know, they wouldn't do so well. If we look at Australia, for example, yes, there's some Albon magic sprinkled in there. You know, they were lightning in sector two, which granted is two DRS zones pretty much, but you know, they were they were still uber quick in a straight line and they still are. And if you know, even at circuits like you know, I I know I refer to it, but you know, Hungary, they they did pretty well given the um yeah uh, God, you, but you, given the limitations of the car, so I, especially with the track changes to Singapore, now I know it's only one change, but we have got rid of that god awful chicane that goes under the stadium. I think it's only temporary for building works, but I've got onto that. Um, I think that could benefit Williams this year, and I think so, certainly, um, what's his name, Albon, because could have a good weekend. Sergeant, not so much. He'll 
get overexcited and then go all freedom and spin it. Um, but um, uh, but but you know, you know Arvon especially, you know, you know, he, he'll, um, I, I've I've got, uh, I'm quietly optimistic about Williams, and I really want to see this sort of upward trajectory of them continue. It is it. It might be a bit of a bump back down to earth for them, especially after doing so well in Monza, finishing what P seven, I think they were behind the Mercs. Um, so you know they they might be out the points this weekend, both of them. And if they are, don't be too disheartened because Singapore is a blinking tough circuit, both in terms of the actual circuit and the uh, yeah, and the weather conditions and everything. Yeah, it certainly is, and it's one of those circuits as well that. Um, this is going to be one of like those few road bumps almost on the way for the teams who do obviously thrive in you know lower downforce scenarios. Um, but yeah, uh, two very different drivers, two very different like driving styles. Um, and Logan, of course, being the rookie, you know, is still finding his feet in Formula One. And um, there, there's been talk about as to whether you know Williams can afford to gamble on another season with Logan Sargent um, whilst Alex Albon is, you know, able to put in these performances and finishing ultimately like best of the rest outside of the top three teams. Um, but, you know, that's another topic for another time in terms of do rookies actually get a fair shot in Formula One? Um, but you can let us know in the comments below. Um, but uh, moving on then. So obviously we talked about, you know, teams in no man's land. Another example of that away is the Alpines and, Part of that's come down to a mixture of, you know, double DNFs, some race weekends that weren't even worth showing up to with how early, you know, they exited the race. Um, we have re seen a recent podium, um, but, you know, is it going to be podiums or is it going to be uh, pitfalls for Alpine this weekend in Singapore? Um I think it's going to be pitfalls. I don't think. I think this is one of those. It, it, it Singapore's exactly the kind of race that is just going to show up every deficiency that you have. Um, it, it is formidable, but I, and I don't think that Dalpine don't seem to have um, any kind of sort of get up and go. They 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 seem sort of like they're still struggling to get out. You know, out of neutral. Um, you know, as you say, they've had double DNS. They may as well have not turned up for a, for a number of races. Um, you know, they've caused themselves probably millions of dollars worth of crash damage. Um, it, it's one of them as well that I, I, it's not. It is absolutely not good enough for a works team, which is what they are. Um, you know, this and this is. It, I, it's not. It's not something that I can see them actually sort of doing well out of. Um, and I think they're sixth place in the in the uh in the constructors sort of belies their their actual true pace i think they're probably behind williams when it comes to uh when it comes to current form and i, and I think there was a fluke that they even got um the podium uh more recently so i think i honestly think it's going to be uh i hate to be pessimistic i honestly think it's going to be a, a tough a tough day at the office um for them um as usual i think and, you know i've said it a lot and, and i've and i feel bad saying it so often um but i i just don't they don't seem to have the the ability to do it if that makes any sense yeah absolutely and i think that's something that was said um you know in well to the press but from a disgruntled ex-employee um otmar safnauer that f what the uh alpine renault just don't have the patience to create a culture that's going to put them, you know, at the front. Um, they've got the money be being the works team, being, you know, the manufacturer, but they just do not have the clue of how to even get back to the front. And it shows it's quite visible. Um, but um, Tom, have you got anything else to say on Alpine before we move on to the McLarens? Yeah, just very quickly. And um and yeah, Al Alpine, you know, there's been a joke recently that they've been called the blue Ferrari or Far Ferrari have been the um the, the red Alpine. It's definitely the former, by the way. Um and at Alpine that they're, they're one of these teams that's you know, much much like Ferrari, not only do they have, you know, their loyal fan base. I mean, yes, Ferrari has a bigger fan base. Um but Ferrari, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> that's funny mistakes making it. Um, but Alpine is 
partly owned by by the French people. It's partly owned by the French government, you know. And well, specifically the Renault brand, um, is is owned by the people, or it certainly was, and I believe it still is. So it's quite literally in the public's interest to see the team do well, and that's not going to help, you know. With uh, you know when 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 they have such up and down weekends, it's it's you know, it's it's like you know, it's. I'm making sort of like um, sort of like comparisons to Ferrari because it's one thing to have you know your loyal fan base you know so Mercedes you know or McLaren Red Bull you know, Williams whoever you know even Mercedes you know they don't have the entirety of Germany behind them or you know you don't sort of really feel that but Alpine you, you know they they all, not get away with it that's not the right word but they have such pressure from the French people who want to see the team do well. And at the minute, it's just proven to be more of a hindrance than a help, and I and that's not helping them at all. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll stick with you um, to talk about McLaren. Um, but the one thing I will also point out with regards to Alpine is, you know, their drivers are P eleven and P ten in the in the standings, um, separated by one point. If we didn't have the wider context of that that would sound like, you know, they were pushing the car to its absolute limits and they were both, you know, at the same level, you know, as we would say about, you know, like if you qualify within, you know, a tenth of each other as teammates, oh yeah, you got the maximum out of the car. We know by having the extra context that that is not where that Alpine really should be when you think about the kind of performances that they were able to put in last season, that they were able to, um, you know, pull out a few seasons ago when they were Renault. Um, but yeah. Anyway, moving on to McLaren with uh, Oscar Piastri also tied on point with Esteban Ocon. Granted, um, you know, he did uh, not finish in the points in Monza um, when he should have got a pretty handy haul of points, I would say. Um, Lando Norris just ahead, well, I say just ahead, double the points. Um, P8 with 79. Um, they are ahead of Alpine, but they are over 100 points behind Aston Martin. Um, is McLaren's job now to just um, secure P5 in the championship, Tom? Yes, it is. Absolutely. They're not really going to catch Aston Martin. You know, Alonso has been the ultimate insert giga Chad mean where he's just basically carrying that team on his back um, because Stroll is just pathetic and useless. Um you can clip that if you want. Um, you know, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, McLaren, they've really benefited from where Alpine uh, sort of fell off. And Alpine fell off at the worst possible time. It was where um, it, it was where McLaren just went, oh, hang on, we need to build an F1 car, not a GP2 engine, like Alonso would say. Um, and then, you know, they just came flying out the blocks. You know, it was, you know, Austria for Lando and then, Silver Sun for both of them onwards, and there's been no real sort of like let up in how they're doing. They've gone from being you know, towards the bottom of the grid to pushing regular podiums. You know, in in the scrap for pole position, it's just like you know what a turnaround this season. So you, you know they, they've they've moved ahead of Alpine. I think barring something going drastically wrong with Aston Martin's sort of title, I say title push, Aston Martin's. P3 in the constructors push just quite the same ring. Um, that you know, M- McLaren just need to stay, you know, j- just stay locked in where they are, just stay ahead of who they're ahead of, and just pick up good results here and there. Had they had a better start to the season, they could have easily been P4, but we can't change the start of the season they had. So yeah, they're 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 doing the right thing. I don't really know what to say for them about Singapore because because you know, we saw them in Austria and Hungary and we said oh they'll be good and then we thought in um uh, in in Hungary oh no sorry um sorry Austria and Silverstone we, you know we thought they'd be good and they were then we thought Hungary they'd fall back down but they didn't so Singapore you know it's just you know again it's another one of the sort of like you know, sort of, you know high down force high deck circuits and they proved once again in um uh in Hungary and then also to a, Less extent in Spa that yeah they can do it so you know I'm ex- I'm expecting and hoping for a good result. Yeah, I think this circuit's going to suit them more than Monza did certainly last race weekend. Um, but ahead of them then, Owain is the Aston Martins. Um, you know, significantly ahead ultimately, 
Uh, Fernando Alonso is currently P- just clinging on to P3 in that championship, um, six points ahead of Lewis. His teammate Lance Stroll is minus 130 points on that, um, currently P10 ahead of both Alpines um, and one of the McLarens. Um, they are, they have fallen back, you know, they are behind Mercedes now in the constructors. They are behind Ferrari in the constructors as well. Um how do you see their race weekend going? And do you think there is any hope of them, you know, recovering to, you know, P2 in the constructors? I don't think there's anything hope of them recovering to P2 in the constructors. Um, but I think there's hope in the race weekend for them going for like coming up. Um, they uh, are supposedly, I think there's some, some reports of them bringing an upgraded car and, you know, this, this front wing that they weren't allowed to run in Baku uh, from a flexibility standpoint. Um, and they they've been saying for quite a while that they I think it was I think they've been saying internally that their their biggest chance of points and their biggest chance of a good result sorry um, is is in Singapore. Um, you know I I I can see that happening. Um, I th- I, th- I don't think I don't think it's possible though for them to to get above the uh, you know the the sort of the big three really. Um, you know obviously Red Bull are far and away uh, ahead of them. Um, and, and and cannot be caught. Let's be honest. Um, you know, Mercedes are uh, also around. Um, I don't think you know unless unless this this is really is a you know a McLaren esque upgrade uh, and takes them back to second place uh, in terms of car performance. I don't think they they are going to do a great job. Um, and and Ferrari, I, I, I to me are a complete unknown. They they had an uptick in form, um, obviously for Monza, but apparently they threw everything on the kitchen sink at that. Um, just to not, not basically to come th- third and fourth, um, such as the, the 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 sort of pace of the Red Bull by comparison. So, um, I think it's I think it's difficult for them to get up there. But you know, the the they should actually take them sort of into a battle with McLaren and and hopefully fend off, um, the 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 increase in pace that McLaren do have. I th- I think that I think unfortunately their their main um. Uh, hope is is Fernando Alonso. I don't think Lance Stroll really has the the talent to to sort of take it to anyone else. Um, to be honest with you, yeah, absolutely. I think Lance Stroll's best performance this season has been Bahrain, and when you consider that he was recovering from an injury during that race, um, you know, it's may, maybe the secret to Lance Stroll's success is being injured. So maybe he should, you know, like have an incident a light incident in singapore and uh you know re-damage some wrists again he'll he'll come back to the race afterwards absolutely steaming up the grid um but tom uh Wayne kind of hinted at this earlier but with ferrari it felt a lot like they brought every upgrade for the sake of having the best possible result in um you know monza their home grand prix and you know i would say they had a very productive weekend and theoretically if you know um Carlos Sainz could have kept defending a bit longer um we might have seen a closer scrap for um P1 after um you know the overtake ultimately happened but um i i'm thinking we're more likely to see a struggling you know um maybe even fighting with the fourth best team um in Singapore Grand Prix weekend for Ferrari yeah, word would be words. Um, words. Words, yeah. What's it's a warm day. It's a warm day. It, yeah. <laughs> what team have I got again? Uh, I got You've got words. Ferrari. We're talking got Ferrari. about Singapore Grand Prix. Great. And it's going to be a difficult one for Ferrari, was my vibe. <laughs> Somebody get the tire blankets of Ruby. I think she's overheating. Um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, for, yeah, I mean, they did seem to bring every upgrade under the sun last week. No pun intended, because it's hot. Um, and it was, um, yeah, they, they they obviously benefited from it. Uh, Ferrari, I mean, I think they are, uh, yeah, all right, yeah, I realised what I said. Um, you know, uh, you, uh, yeah, for Ferrari are just they're just in a weird place. You know, it's just like you know, the last you know, last weekend that was the most competitive that they've looked since well, got about Austria last year, last season. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, last season, yeah, and it's just um, you know, they just. Yeah, I think they did bring. They sort of like put all their eggs in one basket last weekend, and it did sort of pay off. You know, I think they got probably the best they could. Um, I think you know, 
even with the with the track changes and with that last sector this year in Singapore now, I mean, I still don't think it's good. I, I still think they're going to be in for a tough weekend. So I think they're going to get beaten probably by the Aston Martins, um, maybe one of the, one of the McLarens, and you know, well, potentially one of the Mercs. You know, it could it could be a bit a bit of a bit of a shot to the system for them, as I don't think it's going to suit their car very well. Um, I think I think they'll probably get double points. You know, they'll be lower down the points provided they don't DNF and provided Leclerc isn't an idiot or, or is I am stupid. Um, and provided that they don't try and assassinate each other into every single turn like they did last weekend. So yeah, it's um it, yeah, it, it 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 might be one of those weekends where they sort of like take what comes their way and then they just let shenanigans unfold in front of them or behind them. And then just zip through and you know, maybe end up like P4, P5. But I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. And I do think something that's worth like um, mentioning as well is, of course, in Monza, they had a good race weekend on a relative um, scale. Um, but part of that, I think, came down to, you know, allowing the faster driver to actually have the preferred, um, you know, strategy ultimately, you know, rather than favoring, obviously, they have, you know, a driver who is very much more the Ferrari brand. Um, you know, we've seen time and time again this season a, a Ferrari behind another Ferrari going quicker and not being given the opportunity to get ahead. Um, but in this kind of scenario, they allowed the faster Ferrari to stay ahead ultimately. Um, but anyway, uh, a team who have had a bit of a mixed bag here previously, Owen, like some out of the park you know fantastic results and some absolutely shoddy what's going on with our car results here um mercedes in singapore is always a bit of a lottery but um there's talk that this of this circuit is of course a lot more suited to the current sort of way that their car works um and with a longer race you'd have to think it's gonna favor mercedes with a car that works better the longer it goes yeah, we've been saying for uh, we've been saying for quite a while that um, you know, for uh, Mercedes, well, we've, we've they've shown on track that they've uh, they've got a car that's very kind on its tires, and as we've said previously, um, Singapore is a high deg circuit. So as much as they, they, you know, they should sort of become back into the normal, I guess, a bit. Um, they won't have to, they shouldn't have to manage their tires so much um, with the innate qualities of the car. Uh, the only issue I can foresee with that is that typically we also get a, uh, a a safety car or something like that very often in Singapore, which you know obviously could tell your ability to to make use of that advantage. So they're uh, they they'll be hoping that everyone keeps it neat and tidy and um, you know doesn't throw it in the barrier. Uh, you know, bring out a safety car, which would be fairly likely um, as we've seen. So uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a great week uh, weekend for them last year. Uh, hopefully, the changes that they have made have made uh, of sort of improved it a bit um since then um i i i think there's there's promise to them i, I you know i think it's going to depend a little bit on how well aston martin do um what, what the actual true pace of the of the ferrari is and, and and what they manage um but otherwise i think it's relatively promising but um you know i i, th I think mercedes is safe in second in the constructors for now um you know, I don't think they're going to get overtaken this weekend, but I think it's it, it might be one that's a little bit difficult if if the you know if the cookie crumbles in the wrong way uh, for them. But then again, it could be a great weekend if uh, if everything comes up for them. Um, and 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 as I say, they get to make use of their sort of innate car, car characteristics. When it comes to Lewis and Russell, uh, sorry, yeah, Hamilton and Russell, I don't think they're going to have um, too much of an issue. Uh, that you know that they're, they're this is this point where obviously the, you know the last three. The top, the top three teams have solid driver lineups, so um, you know as much as they do make mistakes, I, th I think they're pretty solid. Um, so they shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, as I say, it's just kind of up in the lap of the gods, I guess. Up in the lap of the gods for Mercedes, Tom. Um, you know the top three teams have all got solid driver lineups apparently, and there's top. Um, there is a very you know distinct uh, delta between the two drivers of Red Bull. Um, but we did, of course, have a return to a 1-2 for the team last time out. Um, Singapore is, of course, um, Sergio Perez is, I think it was the last win that he got last season. Um, and, you know, being the king of the streets, in inverted commas, despite half of those wins coming at non-street circuits, um, 
You know, he won here last time out. Um, you know, is this Checo's last solid opportunity to win um, a race this season whilst Max Verstappen is still chasing the championship? Or do you think, um, you know, do you think this is Max's, you know, race weekend to lose ultimately? Uh, I think this is Max's season to lose, to be honest. You know, where it comes to, we could, even, I honestly think we could see him win every single race that we have left. I think if there are any circuits where Checo is going to win, looking looking at the calendar, there's Singapore is probably his best option. I would say followed by maybe Vegas, um, but even then, I, I just I just can't see it happening. To be honest, you know, um, people have been stating Checo, and I understand why he's come under criticism to come under, especially for his qualifying performances. But he's never been known as a sort of like master qualifier. Um, and if I'm just looking at the season results here, so you know, you know, he was, uh, you know, so for you know, so he was P2 in Bahrain, he won Saudi, wasn't on the podium in Australia, obviously won uh, Baku, he was then on the podium for Miami, he was then off the podium until Austria, but he's out of the last six races, bearing in mind, um, obviously one of those is before the summer break, he was on the podium four times. And there's also, uh, he finished 1-2 in the sprint in with Max in, I want to say, Austria as well, where he finished the race in third. So, you know, people sort of like saying, you know, it's a Red Bull crisis, all the rest of it. I don't think so. Uh, you know, and, and maybe I'm being a bit naive because I like Checo and I think he is doing well in that seat. And let's not forget who his teammate is. You know, Max, you know, Max is in, Max is in one of those sort of, Patches of form like Hamilton had sort of like 2017, where everything he touches turns to gold. And no, and no matter what anybody else does, no matter what gets thrown Max's way. And the same, you know, like when Hamilton had his patch of 17, when Schumacher had his Michael, obviously not Nick, Nick was rubbish. Um, and then you know, the same the same with Vettel in his, you know, in his Red Bull years and you know the rest of it. It's like, you know, it, it, but Max is sort of like putting himself into that that kind of discussion. I, I'm not saying that he's up there, you know, with like you know, with like one of the greatest ever, you know, because he's still got you know, still a lot more records and stuff. But you know, he is the first driver to win ten races on the bounce, and and you know, it's just if you look at how he won in Zambor, for example, that was probably the hardest win he's he's had. I would say harder than the win in. Uh, Monza last weekend because he just bided his time he just kept pressuring Sainz and Sainz also made a mistake and he took the lead and it, you know I really I, it, it, unless something happens this weekend I can't see Max doing it because he, even when you go and think back to I mean I, I know I know I know you weren't around for the time race that Max uh, Max had a drivetrain issue or I don't know if it's a full failure but he had a drivetrain issue in quality which meant I think he might have even missed out on Q3 or something. I can't quite remember. Um, he still finished P2 behind Perez. And then if you look at Miami, um, you know, back to, he got caught out by the red flag like a, like a few drivers did after after Leclerc binned him once again. He just sat there by this time, looked after his tyres, and when he needed to, you know, he, he, um, he, 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 he cracked open an extra large can of Red Bull and off he went into the sunset. Um, you know, and you know, it's just it's things like that that just this season. I think even if something happens, even even around somewhere like Singapore, you know, even if he qualified, I don't know, like P twelve because there was a red flag or a you know or, or you know his you know he he had a reliability issue, which I can't see happening because Red Bull had I think two at the start of the season, and that's been it, maybe even just the one. Um, it's just, you know, I, I want to see Checker win, don't get me wrong. But I've also got to a point, and we talked about this earlier when we were playing F1, and one of you two mentioned it. I can't remember who it was. Um, but when one of you said, it's almost getting to a point where you where you kind of want to see Red Bull win every race because it will be such an achievement. And I think with the seven or eight races we've got left, that's where I think has got to, and that's what I want to see happen. That's what I think will happen. Yeah, it certainly will be something of an achievement. And I mentioned as well, um, you know, if they do um, pull it off, every team's going to be like, well, we can't let that happen again, you know, because they've dropped 
like, you know, some teams have dropped the ball. Some teams just haven't been able to perform. And Red Bull have ultimately, you know, created a beast. Um, but that's at least, you know, looking at the grid. Um, we have, of course, mentioned that the uh, change, that there are layout changes to Singapore. They have basically cut out the um, part, of the, you know, right 90 degree right hander sections and stuff in the third sector um due to some uh regenerative works that are going on in that area of um the, the circuit but what this does present a wayne is the fia an opportunity to test an um, established street circuit in a slightly different um variation um what are you sort of expecting from, um, of course, the changes? We do, of course, have a longer, um, la- an, a, a higher amount of laps and all of that um, to make up for the shorter lap. But, you know, what are you expecting from the changes? And do you think there is any potential for the FIA to keep this layout around? I mean, as you mentioned, there's the, the, the sorry, with the lap, distance goes down um so the uh so the number of uh, laps that we have to do is gone from 59 to 62 um i imagine um it, it very it's a subtle change um but because of it i think it's it's going to have a couple of effects of effects on the uh, on the actual racing itself i think it's going to um obviously skew the setup um a little just a teeny bit more towards um straight line speed um there, there's already they're not huge straights obviously at singapore um but it does it just does turn it a bit more into a um an even more of a stop start track um where you don't need to have as much wing on um i think what that's going to do as well is it 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 changes that um there's a right left chicane just before the double left hander onto the pit straight Um, and it changes that from a fairly low speed um corner that sort of strings the car out strings the cars out and it should instead changes them to uh i think there's going to be a bit more of an opportunity at least to either do an overtake into there or set up over an overtake into the uh into the first corner um when it comes to the what the fio should do about this i think you've got you've got an opportunity I and mean, they come up very very rarely but they're useful when they do um is to test or at least see the effects of um just some slight changes on the format um and what they can do i mean so for example um you know uh, like it or hate it uh pirelli's um tire philosophy has been dictated by the 2011 canadian grand prix and 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 the kind of sort of insanity that we had from that um you know taking you know sort of ruining the team's best laid plans we saw it more recently um i think last weekend in monza where people were coming in on you know lap 11 or you know it, it does happen on occasion and it's one of those things where it's, it proves that that, that can work and i think similarly here i don't think they will stick with this once they uh once the regenerative works have been completed um but i think it's it's an interesting to see you know may, maybe it is a vastly improved race just because of this small change um you know obviously i don't think it's going to be huge it is just removing 20 seconds worth of track um but it's one of those things that you can you just never know uh and you have to f- be fully open to the opportunities that it provides um and I, and I and I hope they are. Yeah, absolutely. And you are you are right as well to point out. Um, you know, Monza last weekend tire strategy. You know, we were expecting a two stop, maybe even a one stop, and we obviously got so many more um pit stops ultimately because you know the tires were just going off so much quicker than people were expecting. But uh, Tom, sticking with of course the uh, Singapore layout changes. Um, of course we haven't actually had the race weekend yet. Um, you know. The people who've been playing F123 have obviously got access to um, the new layout and stuff. But, you know, we can see, you know, visibly the changes. Um, who do you think this sort of, these changes are going to benefit um, on the grid? Or is there anyone who you think is probably going to um, struggle ultimately because of the um, changes to how, you know, they're going to have to set up the car and things like that? Uh, well, I think it has to be going to struggle regardless, to be honest. Um but I think it, any car which has a very sort of like draggy aero package, so any car which is not slippery through the air, I think they're going to struggle. Because previously, you know, and any any circuits which have, uh, or, you know, sorry, any cars which have been going around circuits where it's, it's all about being 
sort of like slippery through the air and it's and it's less about downforce. They they tend to have struggled and give it and I know it's only one material change to, to the what is effectively now the back straight. Um it does change the philosophy because you don't you don't have to stop as much coming into you you, you don't have that chicane that oh, I mentioned. But then also you're taking that last left-hand kink at a much higher speed. So provided you know, so, so provided you've got to speed down the straight, you should have enough mechanical grip going through the corner anyway. So it's going to, in theory, you would think, and bear in mind, this is what, what we've done. Oh, this is what I sort of picked up from looking at the circuit and looking online and what we know, and then also playing the game a bit on FM23, which I know is not an exact science. I know that, okay. But, you know, it, it, it is going to be there's going to be a definite difference in setup. You know, w- whether it's just you know, shaving a couple of clicks of front wing or if it's a completely fundamental redesign of the car setup for this weekend to leave it compromised in other areas, who knows? We could not we could end up seeing a slightly more Abu Dhabi type setup because that's obviously got, you know, it's got some long straights, but then it's also got the sort of like twisty infield section. So if you look at that, if you look at like the long straight in Singapore, which is what, like turn five, six, whatever, it's basically the first, like long DRS and the Max had that huge lockup last year. So you know, so you got that, you then got a bit of fiddly in dip, you then got a bit of a long straight over the bridge, a bit more fiddly, and then you know, a decent straight down the back, and then the start finish straight. So it's um it's definitely a much more compromised setup, you could say, this year. So it's uh it, it's gonna be interesting to see like what philosophy teams go with. And I th- I think setup setup is always important, we know that, but but I I, I do think that some teams, you know, especially when you look at the likes of Hash, you know, who, who have a very drag package, they might struggle with um with, with sort of getting getting, you know, a sort of fine balance setup and they might end up having to compromise it, like to compromise their whole existence in F1. Interesting. Um yeah, I can see if if the FIA did stick with um the changes that they've got, I could see them maybe sticking in a DRS um like zone down this new straight that they've ultimately created um you know but speaking of um overtake aids you know drs um oh and this week we've seen you know um talk rumors speculation um but you know commented on by people in charge um you know about f1 ultimately trying to think about how they you know, change the car con- concepts again um, for 2025 to deal with the uh, apparent alleged lack of overtakes um, during this season. Of course, the current car concepts are, are supposed to, you know, make following easier so that we ultimately have more overtakes. But, you know, we, of course, Zandvoort was a bit of a weird one with weather conditions, but we we have had the record number of overtakes in this Formula One season and there's talk about overtakes um, not being enough. What's what's your take on um, this? You know, like does F1 need more overtaking? Is our is the number of overtakes the sign of a great race? Um, I mean, I'll put it this way. Um, I don't think. I I, I think that the there's sort of a, a bit of a law of an un, unintended consequences thing going on here, and I think Formula One's always been a bit trigger happy on the we we've got to change the concept, we've got to change everything. Um, rather than just letting things play out, you get to the end of the, you know, we got to the end of the of the last aerodynamic rule changes, and things were right back close. And you know, a team that had been mighty dominant, and had, you know, apart from a couple of years worth of, you know, half the races being, um, you know, half the races being relatively competitive, and then it falling away. You know, it, it got very very uh, samey after a while. And I think this is just we, we need to we need to let the regulations as we set out with the cost cap and the aero cap uh play out um to answer your question about the overtakes um i don't think overtakes make a good race um i don't think you know the, if you go back to the to the to the huge races that, that we still you know we put down as classics you know i'll, I'll say again canada 2011 or um you know, Bahrain in 2014. You know, or you know, I could, I could go. On, I, I, you know, obviously, I've not, I've not got an extor- an exhaustive list here. But the number of overtakes isn't the only thing. I think the biggest thing, it, and it's the case in all sport, is that it's not just this stat 
going up that makes things interesting. That's not what makes that's not what for make for me makes the Super Bowl between the new uh, for the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons from a few years ago interesting, or any you know any number of different rugby games or football games I've watched. It's the tension. It's 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 what it's you know that the stakes being raised and the story of the race, or you know all through it. And and I think Formula One does need to find a way to convey that to an audience that maybe isn't um, so literate with the highly complex world of, and, and and honestly frightening and un, un, difficult to understand nature of Formula One. Um, you, you know, it almost comes from filmmaking. But if you have a, you know, if you treat the the story of something going along as a rubber band, you you know, you 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 get the entertainment from that that rubber band being drawn, a, a, you know, to to a, 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 as much tension as you can put on it. And that's the sort of thing that you know, it, it's why you know, I'll put it this way: it, it's honestly why the 2021 season is so compelling, or or the 2008 uh, World Championship you know having things go down to the final race where every race matters every you know every single twist in the turn um makes things intriguing I'll, you know I'll, I'll throw 2020 uh, sorry 2010 in there as well you know where it you just didn't know what was going to happen and you had to watch um you know it, 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 it that's the compelling part about it um so I, I to answer your question no I don't think overtakes are the, the be all and end all and i think that they're an easy that we're a stats oriented sort of viewership i think in formula one so that's what we look at we look at numbers we look at data but the actual you know like i say that the intangible tension that you just feel when you watch something that matters um it, it is where you get the entertainment and that's what makes sport compelling yeah, absolutely. You know, um, it's not always about the overtakes. It's about the fight to get the overtake in the first place. And just because it doesn't happen straight away doesn't mean that it's not going to happen eventually. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at some predictions then for this race weekend. So, Tom, I'll come to you. Uh, who do you think is going to put it on pole? And what is your prediction for the podium, please? Uh, I think Max is going to put it on pole. Uh, my podium is going to be a Red Bull 1-2 of Max and Chaco and P3. I'm going to say a manifest. I'm going to say Oscar Piastri. Oscar Piastri gets his first podium in uh, F1 I'd at Singapore. It. That would be something, to say the least, especially for you know, the rookie. Oh, Wayne, your poll prediction and your podium prediction, please. Uh, I think Max is going to be on poll. I don't think that's up for debate, really. Um, I think that Max is also going to take the win. Actually, it's not even a, it's not even a prediction at this point. It, it, like, as a, it was me that said it when we were playing Formula 1 earlier. It was, I, you know, I, I kind of want to see it happen. I kind of want to see someone go and do the whole lot. Um, I think that's, you know, that, that at this point, no one else can win the championship. Why not? Why not see what happens? Um, you know, sort of not see what happens. Why not, you know, set that benchmark? Because, they, you know, and then someone else has got to come and go, come along and beat that. And boy, do they have a task. Um, I think, to be honest with you, it's going to be... I, I think I'm going to go with Fernando Alonso. I'm going to hope those car upgrades work. And uh, and Fernando Alonso will do will be Fando, Fernando Alonso and drive the wheels off the thing. Uh, and then coming up, uh, coming up in third, I'm going to go with... You know, I'm going to be optimistic about Ferrari. I'm going to say that Carlos Sainz is going to get the third place. Intriguing. Um, and then, Tom, let's go for a bold prediction from yourself, please. Both Williams in the points. Both Williams in the points. Okay. Um, Owen, can you top that in boldness, or are you going for something a bit less bold but still bold? I was going to go for that one. <laughs> You're allowed uh, to have the same bold prediction. I'm going to go with Mercedes on the podium. Both Mercedes yeah, on the I'm... podium, probably in a two-three. I mean, you are allowed to supersede your uh, podium prediction. I always with do your bold <laughs> prediction. Um, but yeah, I think seeing both Mercedes on um, the podium in Singapore is going to require um, some shenanigans out front. Um, but uh, yeah, Tom, is there anything you would like to plug at this opportunity? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's um, yeah, uh, go listen to Grid Talk. Uh, no, not Grid Talk. This is Grid Talk. Go listen to Formula Talk. But listen to Grid Talk as well. But also listen to Formula Talk. And Formula Talk, uh, you're probably thinking, hey, Tom, what on earth are you on about? What's wrong with you? I don't know. But um, but for, Formula Talk is uh, the show that Sphere and I do. It's where we look at you know, F2, F3, F1 Academy. Um, sometimes look at IndyCar, to be honest. We, we try and limit it somewhat to what series we look at. But everywhere you can find Grid Talk. You can find Formula Talk. It's a bit, um, it's 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 a bit more ad hoc, um, but uh, yeah, it, it usually goes out about once a week, give or take. Yeah, absolutely. And if you do need a fix of the lower formulas, the junior formulas, formulas, do go and listen to Formula Talk. Oh, Wayne, is there anything you would like to plug at this opportunity? Well, if I unmute whilst, myself, whilst being unmuted, please. yeah, I'd like to plug. Uh, yeah, I'd like to j- just direct you if you just for all the information about Grid Talk and Formula Talk, I believe. Um, if you head to at Grid Talk UK uh, on all the social medias with an at, um, and that's where you'll be able to get the latest news from us uh, about the about the show. Absolutely, and if you want to find anything from me, you can find me on the socials at Rubes maybe put a zero zero one on um some of the meta related ones but you know grid talk is available on youtube where most episodes are recorded live not this one as it is a preview as well as amazon fire spotify google podcasts apple music verbal and pocket casts just search formula one grid talk for a huge back catalog of shows with previews and reactions to the qualifying and the race results you can consider supporting the channel on patreon so we can get mics lights and better recording equipment and also make sure you subscribe when you're the first to know when each new episode is released we're here every single week um but we'll be back next weekend with plenty more f1 content the singapore grand prix um thank you very much for listening uh, to the grid top podcast presented by bet online and goodbye <laughs>